meeting of the Tuckabell Planning Board. Before we get started, does any member of the public have any questions? Yes, sir. Will I be able to, I haven't been here for the last couple meetings, will I be able to add any comment in reference to uh, the recreational vehicles on lots in the town of Tuftonboro. Is was there a hearing on that already, or a public hearing? Uh, we had some zoning changes to limits uh, limiting RVs on uh, lots. Yeah, that was a while ago. Okay, I just happen to print out today's uh, section of what Leanne sent me, so I'm just commenting on it right now. That's all. You don't. Well, hold on one second. Yeah, okay, so when it comes up for discussion, that's why I asked. Actually, you know what? Public comment is the first thing on the agenda, so what do you got? Okay. When I read the limitations and the occupancy and so on and so forth, different questions had arisen in my mind. Example being, I live, uh, you have a house and then you have a lot next to you, and uh, I, your brother, your cousin come down and say, hey, Matt, can we put our trailer on the lot and we'll put a, a porta potty there and we'll be all set and everything else? So I guess my question is, uh, how long can they do that? It says April 1st to September 1st. Can they actually be there for those four or five months? Yes. Without being moved, okay. Yep. The other thing is, we let's say we have bike week and they show up and 50 guys show up on your lawn. Hey Matt, can we throw a tent out here for the night and, and do it and where it says it doesn't? These things I'm mentioning to you are just trying to clarify a tweet. Yeah, if I, if I remember right, and that was a while ago, that was probably a year ago at least right. we were dealing with that. Right. If I remember right, it was one RV and I think there was a tent limit of two, two tents. Right. And you can apply for a permit to the codes officer for more tents than that. But that's only if they get receive a complaint and the complaint the code officer is around to enforce the rules per this. Somebody drives into somebody drives next to me and they, they, they park their trailer on the, on the lot next to me, but they don't file for a permit. They just because they own the lot or they just bought the lot so they can just do that automatically. Well they only need a permit if they're gonna have more than one R V and more than I, whatever the limitation was on tents. I think it was Th that's tents. correct. Okay. Can but the copy of it? Can you take a copy of that? The statute still says that from April first to September first they can do that. Correct. Okay. Uh, in, uh, I don't want to believe it. If a tent or recreational vehicle in any lot is limited to one recreational vehicle in two tents at a time, so that's it. Right. Can I read the tents or RVs may be available by permit? The use permitted is the 15th of April to October 30th, so they allow for one RV and two tents. Anything additional, um, and you would have to go for you know, a permit. Yeah. Can I, if so, if I have a, I own a lot next door to me, and somebody will ask, hey Joe, can I, uh, can I use that lot? And I can say yes, I can give them permission to use that lot to stay there. Yep. You also need to have toilet facilities. You toilet, you have, that's correct. Uh, that's the other part I didn't quite understand when I was reading this. Uh, the lot has toilet facilities connected to an on-site operational subsurface septic waste system. What does that mean? Is septic, that a septic system? That's a permanent septic system in the yeah. ground, or or in there it has porta potty or a porta potty. Or they basically have to be able to prove that they're taking the waste and disposing of it properly. Right. So if they can prove to the codes officer that they have a receipt, that they have somebody pumping their oh, RV, right. Right. fine. Okay. What they can't do is dig a hole and, you know, yeah. put it in the ground. Okay, but as I read it, I mean, there was a lot of things behind, in the background behind this, yep. okay, that somebody would have to pay attention to, okay? Uh, all right. I think there was also something in there that it has to be done as discreetly and out of sight as possible. Yeah, I didn't quite see that. Really? Uh, all right, no, that, that's all. It was, I, I wanted to comment 
on that article, okay, as far as that's concerned. I was concerned about it way back when, okay. Uh, we had an issue uh, up on uh, 171, and I think the guy was just trying to make his neighbor mad across the street because he had all kinds of stuff coming in and everything else. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, I, I just, I just didn't want this to be an open camp around town. Uh, so, I mean, people can show up, they just do what they want to do, they don't get a permit, they don't say, hey, I'm here. You know, they just slide in and they slide out. And just, we don't have anybody running around town checking everybody's lot and, and everything else like that, so. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, we were asked to take a look at camping and RVs in particular, I think, in direct result as of 171. Um, before there was really, I think, nothing on it. And there was there was something on it. Um, you, oh yeah, you were allowed two weeks. There was two some, weeks a year, which okay, but that's gone by now. So yeah, you because they rewrote it. You have four months or five months. You could stay there. Right. Whatever the, the, the problem with the two weeks was the codes officer. Or there was no way to figure out. All right, you were here for four days here and five days. You just couldn't do it. You as a resident of that issue would have had to record it. Right, and then go right. to the court's office and say, hey, look, if you've been here for two weeks, there's a report. So what, we were, so what we were trying to do was find a reasonable compromise between allowing somebody who owned a piece of property to utilize it for responsible tenting and stuff like that. Right. And the theory being that, hey, they might put an RV on there, you know, as they're waiting to build their house or something like that. And, you know, they, maybe they have some friends up, their kids, they put them in a tent or two. Where's the harm? Uh, but we wanted to avoid was, you know, 50 people, 60 people, you know, tenting and having that situation. But we also wanted to give people flexibility if they had a wedding or something like that, where, you know, they want to do an outdoor wedding or, or a camping wedding, which people do nowadays, that they could go to the town and they could say, hey, we're having a wedding. You know. This would be a hypothetical situation, and I don't want to drag it all night. Uh, you turn around, you're selling your house. You clean it out the whole bit and say, but you, you now have a trailer on your property that you're living in. And you don't sell your house for six, eight months, but you're still living in a trailer. How does that work? Well, you'd be allowed to. If you're allowed. There's, there's no restrictions against that, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And as long as you were within those dates and periods of time and you were properly disposing of the waste. Okay. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah, no problem. Okay, consideration of the minutes for December 3rd and December 22nd. Did anybody see any changes that need to be made? No, I read them. It's good to me. No, I read them. Yeah. I read them. They were fine. I, I'm good. They're good. I have a motion to accept the minutes as written. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next up. Public hearings for zoning amendments to section 16.2.5 driveway permits and section 13.6 F.13 tables of uses. Uh, we went through these, the driveway permits, I think everybody remembers basically they just wanted a change made so that if you were making a change to your driveway, the town got input so that they could make sure they didn't have water running out of the road. So you have to go get a permit. Um, and the tables of uses was basically the outdoor storage component that we were working on that jack um, So there's a way we have to do this. And let me make sure I do it right. So first up, we're gonna open a public hearing for those two amendments. And then if I'm reading this right, what we need to do is to move the zoning amendment by the section to town warrant as proposed. In other words, we would need a motion. So can I get a motion to move the two zoning amendments, section 16.2.5 driveway permits and section 13.6.F.13 to town warrant as proposed? Okay. And a second? I'll second it. And we need to do a roll call vote. Did you close the public hearing already? Great point. Hold on one second. Okay. We're going to close the public hearing. We had a motion. We had a second. A roll call vote. Uh, George? Yes. Yes, me. George. 
Yep. Carol Bush, yes. Tony Carelli, yes. Eric Corr, yes. Matt Young, yes. And let me just read this page and make sure we did that. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Now what we should be doing. So the rest of it is going to be a site plan review regulation change. Okay. Regardless of what the regulations hearing, the only amendment to the zoning ordinance issues inclusive in such a table of uses. Yep. Okay, so you do the table of uses. Which all that will be doing is adding the outdoor and storage. The attached geo, which is this guy right here. Yep. I was just worried. After I can go to manage the site plan review, which would be including the site plan review, which is required to be on the one. Yeah. I don't know how to be on the one. Rather, it is a good thing on the plan that would fall in the public hearing. Yep. So, which is required to be on the one. So, we can do, we'll do the site plan review section. Good. You know what we're adopting. Yeah, but we only have to put some stuff up there. The only disappointment was the way. Don't do this. Right. We're, what we have already done is we uh, folded the changes to the table of uses as well as the driveway for once. So the table of uses, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Carol, Tony, you're on tape. You will pick up your conversation in that too. Into this guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So where does the town walk on that? Does it go to, to the town in March? Yep. It does. Yep. And just the just the just the table of uses. The just that. Yep. Not and this. then the change to driveway permits. <coughs> okay. Yep. So this stuff doesn't go with it. No. That's an old process. Okay. Perfect. Sorry, Sorry for that one. All the all changes. Remember? Right. You saw it? That's all. Yep. Stack yep. Okay. Okay. That's what I read. I sent it to the last night. Yep. With that, uh, we've got some discussion items. Bill had requested a couple of things to be talked about. Uh, one is illegal tree cutting on Durgan Road. Um, so if you guys remember, every road in the town of Tuftonboro is a scenic road, which means if you're going to make any cuts within the uh, right of way, which on that road would be a three rod lay, so roughly within 14 feet of the side of the road. Uh, just like the utility companies, uh, when they come in and ask for permission to make the cuts, landowners are supposed to come in and make permission to, to uh, ask permission to make cuts. A property owner on Durgan Road cut I don't know, probably 150 feet worth of trees on the side of the road, um, which would normally require planning board permission. Um, it had gotten to the selectmen, I just imagine somebody complained, um, and the uh, bill has asked for the planning board's input on it. Um, so I don't ever recall having anyone come in and ask for permission to do cuts for themselves on a, on a town road. I mean, it's usually the utility comes in because they come in and make pruning. Um, also, the planning board does not handle enforcement, and this has already happened. The trees are on the ground, so it would seem to me that this is a codes officer issue, um, but that the planning, the selectmen are absolutely correct that the person would come in and get permission from the planning board before making any cutting on the road. But at this point, the planning board has no enforcement power whatsoever. That is the purview of the selectman and the codes officer. So it's up to them whether they want to require a fine or they want to require replanting or, or whatever they want. Is that where the foundation is going in? No, this is directly across from Alex Hunt's house. Oh, I know where you are. Actually, yeah. I, I think it was Alex Hunt. So yeah. they cut town property, which is in 14 feet or so. Well, there's trees on town property, basically. No, it's, he, he probably owns, you know, in most places you own, you even own the land under the road. I think that's it. 
Good post spot, did you? Uh, I think Alex bought it from Skip. What? I think Alex bought it from Skip. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, he just bought it. Okay. Oh, okay. So he went in, I don't know, cut probably 10 trees down. So, to open up a view. Okay. Which actually looks quite nice. I'm sure it does. But, um, well, there's views here already, huh? Okay. There's an even better one now. Right, yeah. Um, but that does not change the fact that you're supposed to ask for permission before you, you cut. So, so it would be in any room in Tuftonboro on and your property of the trees on the roadside you're talking about. Yeah. Well, anything that's in the right of way. In the right of way. Mm -hmm. Oh, Just right of way. Or so what would we recommend now, being that the trees are cut? It, that this guy has to go to the codes officer for enforcement, which, Okay. I mean, we're, we don't do enforcement. The trees, right. the trees are on the ground at this point, so we can't magically regrow them. But uh, it's up to Jack with what mm -hmm. they do. It's actually a state RSA for scenic roads. Talk, uh, talk about enforcement. Uh, I'm sorry, am I going to interrupt you? you no, go for it. Could I ask a question on Mr. On this? What, if, if he had come to us, uh, this person had come to us, how would we handle that? Would we visit the site, look at it, or would you call Jim Bean and say, would you go take a peek at this? I think it normally, if, if I had, I mean, we've never had it happen. No one's ever come in here and yeah. like, hey, I want to cut some trees. And normally, I doubt anyone would ever complain. Probably a lot of people don't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't think he had any idea about it. Probably didn't. No. So, um, so you got a complaint that of this issue? Uh, the selectman did. Which is how it ended up here. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, I would assume that if a guy came in and said, "Hey, I want to cut down 150 feet worth of trees." you know, on property here to open up a view, you know, a couple of us would probably go look at it. And if it was gonna look good, we'd probably say, hey, that, that sounds pretty good. And if it didn't, we'd probably say, no, that doesn't sound very good, you can't do that. Um, I've looked, I mean, I've driven by it, it looks pretty good. And I also noticed that quite a few of the trees you cut down were ash trees, which are gonna die anyway in the next two to three years because emerald ash borer is coming. Yeah, so. He probably actually cut down about two trees that weren't going to die anyway. But again, that doesn't change it. That's not the point. It, it goes, it has to go to the codes officer for enforcement. Yeah, conservation. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, you might make him re up and maybe put some little trees in. Yeah, I, I'm pretty I sure that he'll do whatever he's got. I mean, I drove by there the other day. We'll find me. Nice to get that view. It actually, it's a breathtaking view now. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah the conservation commission will get this on the view. I mean, they look at a lot of tree cutting going on. They just open up the views. So a lot of the forest is being really wiped out. Mm -hmm. So they look at a different aspect. And, uh, I can understand where they're coming from. This particular case, you're talking a tree line down the edge. Uh, it makes a difference. But. Yeah, I mean, it's probably, I mean, at the edge of the roads there, you know, we're talking about trees that were, yeah, here. Yeah. So, um, not the worst, I came through my yard seven years, eight, ten years, and I took that seven of my trees on the road. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. that yeah, I couldn't do anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, they did open up the new tree. <laughs> like I said, it was probably yeah. about two trees there that actually mattered, but yeah, it's neither here nor there, so we'll send it to Jack. Um, the other thing uh, uh, Bill wanted to know about was Steve Hunter's, uh, where we're at with the letter. Letter Leanne is talking to Justin about having that process started that uh, Don and you, Tucker, Sir Dell will have to go down with a site plan that's out of compliance, so okay. for Steve, yep. So that is that's oh, where that's Steve Hunt. Yep. So that's where that's going. So I did have somebody make a complaint to me about that. I I did as well. Yeah, I always yeah we get a lot of them. I, apparently the selectmen have too, and now the selectmen want something to happen. So so good. Yeah, that is good, but nothing's going to happen. <laughs> 
if you're not speaking. Well, we'll let we'll let the you know attorney go down his list or whatever they do. And, you know, it's pretty much out of our hands at that point. So, any other discussion items? So, how are we coming with steering committee membership? Uh, brought in one person right now. Suvin Gates on board. Okay. Uh, as we discussed, I talked to Carol Ogilvy today about direction I wanted to take, okay, keeps changing because some people are in and out, okay. Um, I wanted to bring on a little younger staff, okay, if possible for their opinion. You know, it was different than, than the retired staff, if you will. Um, so we have a couple more candidates that I'm going to look at. This one would be Seth, okay. I, want to, I do want to talk to, uh, to uh, um, my notes here. I wanted to talk to Helen Parkshorn also, which I'll do uh, next week. I got to wrap this up by uh, our next meeting, the 21st, so it has to go in. So, so right now we've got Carol, uh, we got Maureen as an alternate, and myself. And as far as the planning board goes, the two of us is, is, is adequate. Uh, they really don't want any more than two. They want to, they, you want to be able to go to the outside, basically. So, okay. um, so we have Sue, and uh, so I'm going to be talking with Helen to see if she'll come in, because she can contribute to budget type stuff. Uh, and potentially uh, uh, Seth. 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 And I like it because you know he's of an age that he deals with a lot of kids, he deals with a lot of parents. So you know he's he understands what's going on in kids' minds and parents' minds and how they might see the town. And uh, and obviously that camp and the other four camps in our town are quite critical to, to what we do here and the success of the town. So at this point he also understands zoning fairly well. What's that? At this point he also <laughs> understands zoning fairly well. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah. Well, we can teach them on the side a little more. Yeah. But, uh, and if you have, if you guys have any suggestions, now Sue had thrown a couple names at me, and I'm like, ooh, you know, one of them I knew, and I'm like, so the other thing I, I have, I can do, and I, well, I'm going to probably do this too, is as, as the chairman of this, I can, I can set up a um, secondary committee, okay, a steering committee, the subcommittee steering committee. And we're probably going to do that in a couple of things. And I may have Sue, for example, because if there's nobody on, on, on the, on the uh, board from uh, the committee from uh, conservation, which I don't think there will be, uh, Steve, that was uh, uh, mentioned, is extremely busy. Um, and uh, Steve Wingate told me he's not going to, he's just so, he's jammed. I'm like, okay. So what I can do is set up that subcommittee to get their input and have Sue bring somebody else on board, two other people, so the seven three, then she can go off and get all that stuff done with the conservation committee when we get to that point, all right? And um, if, if we get somebody like um, <clears throat> Helen with, it, with the CIP, all right, she can give us direct input. Uh, if not, we'd look to set up somebody that we could find to go deal with the CIP, all right? So there's different ways. The other thing that we want to look at uh, uh, discussed today was our health. Okay, um, health is a subject that will probably come up in this um, in, the, in the town for the town report, um, the town plan. Due to COVID, a lot of things, a lot of people are talking about health. So I'm going to be looking for a doctor, okay, or somebody in that type of position that can come in and discuss. Uh, Kind of what the town the state plans are and what they're seeing and what we should be 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 I got one of them. So actually now that I think about it, I have somebody for your committee would be great. Well I thought that also that Seth is interesting because his wife also can talk talk and some of that, but we need somebody maybe more well, stronger because she's well, a nurse. Sarah um, Stacy on uh, just retired on um, her husband works for me. And she's what's the last name? Stacy. Stacy. Yep. Okay. I don't know. She was worked at. Uh, she was a hospitalist at Wentworth Douglas for a million years. And uh, great person to work with. 
I was, you know, like I was going to hit up Fleet, Dr. Fleet, say, hey, you want to jump in? What? So she, she, would, she would be very good. So, so that was interesting that uh, Carol Wolgaby had discussed that with me today, brought that subject up. And uh, I'm like, oh, I hadn't thought of that really, so I appreciated that. But it will, she's saying things are changing dramatically with the COVID thing, and the towns are looking at a lot of different things. So um, I think some of the objective that we'll have here is not only get through each chapter that we have to deal with, but that we can present to the town a plan that also tells new people that potentially coming here, Carol, that you would bring in new clients to you, you know, to sell real estate, that our town is traditional, and we, we don't want to forget that tradition. But at the same time, for young people, we have an infrastructure that is becoming state-of-the-art, believe it or not. I mean, it really is. So we have a new fire station. Okay, we have a good safety building. We have a lot of good equipment. We're going to have a new police station sooner or later here. We have a new library, all renovated. Okay, we have, a, we have an elementary school that is, is rated 8 out of 10. Um, right now, that's a good score in the state. So, um, and we have a town hall, which is our history, but yet it's been renovated. It's a great town hall. You know, and it works really well for us. So, you know, when people see our data or start to see our overview of this, if they understand that, Hey, these guys are traditional, but yet they have the, the things that we really would want our, you know, to have in our community for the safety of our children as we grow up and live there. So I mean, that's kind of my thought process. But everybody else has a different thought process, and we'll put it all together. So, um, And the only other thing we should talk about is that when we do our first meeting, um, we will set all the schedules. We'll talk to everybody that's on board about what their itinerary is like and when they could meet on Zoom. Some of the people are you know, busy like yourself, so you know, whether it's late in the day or is it going to be an evening Zoom, you know, what's it going to be? So we'll, we'll figure that all that stuff gets done in the first meeting. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. So I'm going to have to wrap this thing. So if you have anybody have any suggestions, feel free to email me, text me, whatever. So. And uh, the health thing, by the way, could be done in a separate invite in. Okay. So. Cool. All right, that's where I'm at. Anybody else have any? Yeah, just a little input over here. Uh, we have this uh, project in town, it's called GoToMeeting. You could use that as a part of, I just wanted to mention that towards the end. For your group, okay? Uh, we've had past discussions already this week. Uh, I've talked with Chip a couple times that every, department head is going to possibly get on board in the future for setting up this go-to meeting thing so people can call in and people can see what's going on. Yeah, we're going to have a public session, okay? Well, and, and, and that'll be set up into that type of system, okay? We're on a Zoom have... account? Is that what you're saying? No, what we do, we'll have, we're having work sessions, the planning board and these people uh, on a Zoom, uh, but when we go to public session, we invite the public in, when we've made data and we have suggestions and things that we're going to talk to the public, then we want to hear public input. That will be done later. We're hoping to do that later when the COVID thing is done. This is going to be, take a year to do this. But in the meantime, okay, you can get it up and people at least can call in with questions. Now, we both know if we look at the stats, not a lot of people call in even when this thing is available, okay? But I'm taping tonight, but I can't possibly do that all the time, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm going with this is it's costing us $2,000 a year plus, because I hit the budget committee on this, for this go-to meeting, and it's accessible for everybody to use it. So I, I'm not going to drag that on. I just wanted to mention that what, what may be coming along down the future. Yeah, that'll get mentioned at MRI, the company that we're, we're looking to hire, okay, um, Municipal Resources. And uh, they will guide us through this whole process. They've done many a time for many towns. But if we, if you hire another company, if we already have one in effect already, it's just going to cost more money. No, that's on, you're talking on it. On the, you're talking on the, on the go-to. I'm talking, this is a firm oh. that does town plans with the towns. Okay. okay so. And I know you don't want to stay here all night. I want to drag one more thing here, please, on that. I read the minutes, 
and I saw Marilyn Stacy, and, and she was here at the Selectman's meeting, and uh, it was advised by you guys or her, uh, the Selectman to get 25 signatures to create a warrant article. And this is in reference to North Country Village. So I guess my first question is, the things that she is proposing, wouldn't that have to come to the planning board first and then to the selectmen? Is that, would that be the process? Well, the only thing she really wanted for the planning board was to look at changing the well radius protection right. area. Right, exactly. You know, for a million years it's been 75 feet. Right. But you, which is a nice simple way of figuring, you know, you take a tape measure, you go 75 feet, you can't have your septic system anywhere within that area. What Marilyn was saying is that the state will, in some cases, allow a town to use a different way of doing it, which is, you know, they measure, you know, it from, imagine you're going through underground, so to speak, um, and would the town consider, you know, the you know, planning board consider changing the zoning, you know, to that unit of measurement rather than, you know, just a straight 75 feet, you know, over the ground. So that was basically what she was asking for. I mean, she talked a lot. Yes. But what she was really asking for was just that. Okay, I was just wondering the hierarchy and how it had to go. You know, you're creating a warrant article, you're looking for money. There was a couple things in that proposal about buying some property and this, that, and the other thing, so. Well, she wanted the town to consider buying the clubhouse in North Country Village to operate as a store. Right. But, I'm, but they're operate, they already have a cooperative there. It seems it was, she was told that she has to go through the cooperative first before she comes here. Or to well, the I assume that, yeah, there's a co-op there, and nothing's going to happen unless the co-op wants it to happen. Okay. I mean, that's why, that's, you know, that's their group. They're, you know, they go on that. They, that's what they got, you know. So okay. for anything to happen, the co-op has to want it to happen. Okay. By whatever mechanism they have for voting, and I don't know what they have down there. I only bring it up because I read the minutes from the last meeting or whatever, so but, but I'm the, just the, curious. But the question about well, you know, protection, you know, areas. I mean, that's that's a planning board, you know, that's okay. a, uh, purview. Okay. But you know, the problem when you do something like that is, you know, when you're looking at guys who are installing septics or installing wells or something like that, they're just looking for a simple answer. They want to be able to take a tape measure. And they want to be able to run at 75 feet. Right. You know, they want to know, you know, they don't want to do algorithms about, you know, what the 75 feet is. You know, in our business, we can get a waiver from the buddy property to put a well closer than 75 feet to a septic system. We have a waiver. You have to ask for it. We have to ask for this waiver. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I've done a few of those. With my they want 65 feet, 60 feet, so the probably would have to sign off on it. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to really look into it, but we will. All right, thank you. No problem. Anybody got anything? Nothing All right. Nothing? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Next so meeting, move. please. So move. That's a good question. I have no idea. Oh, January 21st will be next. January 21st? Yeah. That's Next meeting is January 21st. All right, thank you. 7 o'clock, same place. Okay, motion to adjourn. Double. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you.